if you have children that you are trying to raise in the faith, chances are their faith is going to be challenged at some time. Whether that is kids on the playground who don't believe that Jesus exists, or as they become teenagers and people have questions about how can you believe that the Bible is true. Well, as a Christian parent, you want to be prepared for these kinds of conversations in advance. You don't want your children just going out into the world with no real knowledge of what Christianity is, why we believe what we believe. We want to have our children prepared so that they can stand strong when these challenges and conversations happen. That's why I'm so excited today on the podcast to speak with Natasha Crane. Natasha Crane is the owner of NatashaCrane.com and the author of three books I love keeping your kids on God's side, talking with your kids about God, and talking with your kids about Jesus. Whether your kids are 4, 14, or 24, these are conversations that you will want to have to make sure that they can stand strong in their faith no matter what challenges come their way. So if you are a parent or if you just love the topic of Christian apologetics and want to learn more, then definitely stay tuned for today's episode. Well, Natasha, thank you so much for coming on the Equipping Godly Women podcast today. Will you start my burning question before we even get started? We're going to talk so much today about Christian apologetics, but so many people may not be familiar really with what that term means. So will you just start us off by telling us all, what is Christian apologetics? What does that mean? Absolutely. And you're right. A lot of people have never heard the word before, maybe have a misunderstanding about it. But apologetics just comes from a word that means a defense. So it literally means to make a defense of Christianity. So for example, 1 Peter 3.15 says that we should be prepared to give a reason for the hope that is within us and to do so with gentleness and respect. And that last part is really important because a lot of people, when they do know what apologetics is, they think it means that we're just fighting with people and arguing and we just want to go back and forth in some kind of hostile way. But that's not it at all. It's literally just how do we actually know that Christianity is true? We need to be able to answer that and give a reason for our hope to others. So I like to give people the full definition. It's making a case for and defending the truth of Christianity. That's my favorite way to say it. And I love that. And I feel like that's so important in today's political climate more than ever. I mean, it's always obviously important to know what we believe and why we believe it and all of that. But with all of the mudslinging that is happening, it is so important to be able to give that defense of, okay, Christianity is not just this set of backwater rules that are old fashioned that we just follow because our parents, 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 parents did, but there is actually a reason and a hope and a defense for what we believe, all of the beliefs that we have. We didn't just pick them up out of nowhere, like there's a reason for these things. So I think your work is just so important and I love what you do and I love your books. Will you give us a really quick overview? I know you have several books out now. So will you tell us some of your books and the difference between which one people should start with? Yeah, so the books I have, they're kind of over my back shoulder. You can see them back there for a little bit of a visual. Uh, but my first one was called Keeping Your Kids on God's Side. And that was basically an apologetics 101 for Christian parents. So if parents are like, where do I even start to learn about these kinds of subjects? Like, I don't know how to tell my kids, you know, why there's good reason to believe God exists or why the Bible's true. So that book basically goes through 40 of the most important questions that kids need to understand about apologetics. So it's just kind of a broad overview. And then a lot of people who read that book said, hey, I want more like this. These are short, easy to understand chapters are really good for parents. It's written specifically for parents so that they can be able to explain these things to their kids. You know, what do I read next? And so I came out with my next one, which is called Talking with Your Kids About God. And that one focuses just on the God level questions. How do we know that God exists? And what is the nature of God? And what difference does it make if God exists? These kinds of questions. And it goes through 30 of those. And my most recent one is talking to kids about Jesus, which came out in March. And that one focuses on the Jesus level questions. So it goes through the identity of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. How do we know Jesus was raised from the dead? That's a really important and huge question that we need to be able to talk about with our kids. And those are the kinds of topics that I go through there. So all together, there are a hundred conversations between the three books and they're all written specifically for parents to help you have these really important conversations with your kids. So what I love about your books is the way that they're written because so many 
Christian nonfiction books, which is what I write as well, is just like this whole long list of all of like, here's everything you know in lots and lots of chapters. But what I love about your books is that they're written as individual conversations. So the mom, the dad doesn't need to be an expert in all of the things, Christianity, and be able to give a defense of everything. But you can go in and see, okay, what does the Bible say about this issue? And it's very easy to it's very accessible. It's very easy to go through. Okay, here is exactly how we can know. Um, I am very curious to know, how did you get started writing about Christian apologetics? What made you go into, do you have a background in this? What made you go into this area specifically? Well, it came about very unexpectedly, actually, because I, like most people, had no idea what apologetics was for most of my life. Even though I was raised in a Christian family, went to church my whole life, I never personally walked away from my faith, even though I had a very nominal faith for a long time. But I had never heard this word in church. It's just not something that most churches focus on, which is very, very unfortunate. But back in, uh, let's see, 2011, it's been nine years now, uh, I started a blog and I just decided I was going to write about Christian parenting. So I started this blog called Christian Mom Thoughts. And I thought I was just going to write about what we were doing to help our young kids know and love Jesus. And I had three kids who were three and under at the time. So we're talking very little. And so I'm just writing about the very basic things that we were doing. And as I started writing over a few months, just very unexpectedly, I started getting a lot of traffic coming from people who were skeptics of Christianity because people were sharing my posts on social media and things like that. And it was drawing other people to the site who just wanted to come and make fun of the kinds of things that I was talking about. I was not looking to have these conversations. I, ha I really didn't know how to answer anything they said, but suddenly I was hearing these questions that I had never confronted myself before. Uh, just because I wasn't traveling in those kinds of circles. I wasn't engaging those things. And people were saying, there's no evidence that God exists. The Bible's filled with errors and contradictions. Don't you know that Jesus never even existed as a person in history? Things that I was just blown away by. And I realized, even though my kids were very little then, that they were growing up in a totally different world than the one in which I grew up. And so that just sent me searching for answers. I realized, gosh, how have I not asked these questions? How have I really not dug into this before? And so I just really started reading everything that I could get my hands on. I've always been a huge reader, but ever since that time, I read just like crazy because I'm constantly just digging into these questions. And as I I did, I then turned around and made my blog a place where I was equipping other parents with the same information. So as I was looking at the evidence for God's existence, I would turn around and write on the blog and say, hey, here's what you need to be able to talk about with your kids when it comes to this question, for example. And so eventually over time, the blog really grew and I had the opportunity from a publisher to start writing books um, specifically for parents in the same way. And that's kind of how I got into it. But it was all very uh, inadvertent. I never set out to become a writer. I never set out to become a speaker or anything like that. It's just the journey that God brought me on through this unusual path through blogging. That sounds a lot like my blogging and publishing story as well. I also got started as just a mommy blogger, just wanting to help other people. And you just follow that path and follow the threads wherever they lead. And it brings these amazing opportunities. I wanted to ask you, when you talk about these parents, these conversations that parents should be having with their children, what age should we be having these conversations? Do we need to start them really little when our kids are two and three and start having these conversations from an early age? Is it something that we should really wait until they are teenagers so that they can better understand what's going on? Do we wait until our kids have questions or are we more proactive? How would you recommend going about these conversations? Yeah, that's such an important question because I think a lot of parents they assume apologetics is something that maybe when your kids are like 17, then you're like, oh, they're going to leave home in another year. I need to maybe talk to them about some of this stuff. And that could not be further from the truth. And I think that's a problem with how uh, people have just understood what apologetics is. They think that apologetics is getting into some really detailed, crazy level stuff that, you know, is just for specialists. And that's not what it is. I mean, like I said, First Peter 3.15, Peter is saying that we should all be able to give a, a reason for that hope that we have. If somebody asks you, well, why do you believe Christianity is true? Why are you staking your whole life on this? If you can't actually give an answer for that other than like, well, I was raised this way, or I feel like it's true, or I've you know, somehow experienced God. If you can't give a more robust answer, then maybe we need to reflect a little on that and realize we need to raise our kids with a better ability to do that. And so when we talk about apologetics, we're not just talking about going 
going into deep dives into every answer. Of course, that's possible eventually as our kids get older, but it's about raising them with this whole view of the world from the time that they're very little, as soon as we're talking to them about Jesus, when they're three or four years old, that we help them understand God, even though we can't physically see him, it's never just that he expects us to believe and we're just taking some kind of blind leap of faith, that God has given us lots of evidence for his existence and he's given us lots of evidence that the Bible is actually his word and that Jesus is God and that Jesus came and he died and he was raised from the dead. All of that just starts to build this view of their faith that will help them to, to just have a much more robust understanding as they get older and people start saying, oh, well, that's just your opinion or, you know, you're just guessing at that. There's no evidence. Even little kids can start to understand that. And just to give a really tangible uh, example, let's say that you have, an, and I, I like this one because it's so simple, but let's say that you have a plate and it has cookie crumbs on it. And you know that mom made cookies earlier in the day, right? Maybe the kid comes downstairs and you're like, look, there's a plate with cookie crumbs. What do you think happened? Well, you can infer from the evidence of that, that someone has eaten a cookie. This is just the most basic example, right? But in the same way, we're teaching them to start to understand that we see these little pieces of evidence, we can give them that word, that something happened. And even if we didn't see it directly, we know from our experience that we can come to some conclusions. And then that leads itself to being able to talk about things like how we see around us in nature, in the natural world, how we see design, how we can see creation, that the, the heavens declare the glory of God. All these kinds of conversations really spring from an overall view that's very apologetically driven without even thinking about it. It's not getting into tons of scientific details at that age. It's just giving them that way of thinking about the world and a way of thinking about their faith. And there are all kinds of little things that you can do like that. And in my second two books and talking to kids about God and talking to kids about Jesus, every single chapter ends with a conversation guide. And it goes step by step and gives you questions that you can use with your kids to draw out the content in the chapter. And the very first one is really just for even the youngest kids. It's just an easy conversation starter that you can use to just hit a couple points from the chapter. And then as they grow, you can come back to it. It's not like these are one-time things where you hit a topic and you move on forever. I'm not saying you dump everything on a four-year-old, but it gives you the questions that you're going to want to discuss over time that you start with and then later you come back to and add a little and you keep adding and adding. So that's a long answer to say that you should start talking about apologetics and giving them that understanding from a very young age. Really, as soon as you're talking about Jesus, you can be talking about many of these things. So what would you say are some of the most common objections or misconceptions that children especially are going to face? So we're going to have all of these conversations over the course of their life, but kids especially, what kinds of things are they hearing in schools? I have been out of public school for a long time. So what kinds of things are children hearing at school that we need to be prepared to have these conversations with them in advance? Yeah, that, you know, one of the things that I think parents are always surprised by is that the most common question they'll get from, from their kids when they come home from school, if their parents actually ask them, engage with them, is just, how do I even know God exists? Because ultimately, what we see in the data and the religious trends today, you can see that Christianity is dropping off pretty quickly, at least as people are willing to associate with the label. So 10 years ago, when researchers would track this and they would look at how many people identify as a Christian, you have 77% of Americans who identify as a Christian. And today that number, just a decade later, is 65%. So that's, that still seems like a majority, but it's declining quickly. And if you actually ask people what they believe so that you can kind of get a feel for, well, is this just in name only or is this based on their beliefs? A lot of uh, research around that has shown that it's really more like 10% of America has a biblical worldview that just believes the basic claims of the Bible. And so the, the number of Christians in America, this is so important for parents to understand, even if a lot of people still will say they're a Christian, that's declining quickly, but also the actual number who have a biblical worldview is very small. So the reason I bring all this up with this particular question is that you have to understand that when your kids are going to a public school, especially, they're going to encounter the majority of people who don't have any kind of Christian worldview and many of whom don't believe in God at all. So we don't see that Christianity is declining and maybe everyone's going toward Islam or Mormonism or another kind of theistic religion where people agree that you know God exists. 
overwhelmingly they're going toward a view that either God doesn't exist or maybe God's just some kind of higher force. So this tells us our kids have to be prepared to have some kind of understanding of why there's good reason to believe that God actually exists. And this is where they need to understand what we call objective evidence. It's not just, well, honey, you know, I've, I've always experienced God and I've seen him work powerfully in my life. Our testimony is good. It's helpful. It's something that we should share, but we also need to look at the kinds of evidence that, you know, put on the table in front of everyone and say, okay, we're outside of our personal experience. Let's look at these things in nature. Let's look at the fact that the universe has a beginning and everything that has a beginning has a cause. And so, you know, that's one thing, or let's look at the design in nature and let's look at uh, the moral law we have. These are all the kinds of things that apologists talk about. And so, uh, and I go into this, these specifically in talking with your kids about God. And so those are the kinds of things we want to help our kids understand. So it doesn't become at school like, like, well, I believe in God. You don't believe in God. You know, there's no tiebreaker here. There's a huge tiebreaker. There's a lot of evidence that's out there. And our kids really need to understand that because they're going to encounter this lack of belief in God everywhere they go. That's a huge one. And the second thing I would say is just, you know, questions about the reliability of the Bible. Is the Bible the inspired word of God? There are plenty of people who might say, yeah, I believe that, you know, there's some kind of God out there. Maybe they don't deny God's existence and they're fine if you believe in God. But the idea that this God is not just some deistic God who's out there in the far reaches of the universe and doesn't really care about us, but that he actually entered history, that he's actually revealed his will for us, that he actually has a moral law that has some kind of bearing on our lives and that there are consequences for that. That's so offensive to people in today's world. And so our kids, have to understand not just God exists, but very specifically that Christianity is true and that God has revealed all of this in the Bible. And so that's those two things together are really key. And I've actually been thinking about writing a blog post on this subject that a lot of times Christian parents raise their kids almost as deists, someone who just believes in a general concept of God, but they don't get to the specifics of Christianity so much about the Bible and about, you know, how we know that Jesus was who he said he was. So yeah, I think God and the Bible, these are the two big subjects that kids will constantly encounter in all kinds of shapes and forms. Yeah, and that's part of why I am working on my book that's coming out soon too, um, fall in love with God's word because I see again and again so many people on social media and in churches where they say, okay, I am a Christian, but that doesn't mean I necessarily believe everything the Bible says. Or everyone has so such different opinions on, well, the Bible says this, but I don't necessarily agree with that part of it. So having this defense of, okay, the Bible is not just a book of suggestions, like there is actual evidence for God and Jesus in the Bible and all of these things, like we can have reason to believe that when God inspired these words that they were true and he meant them, um, that that's so important as children go from children to teenagers into this world where there's so many people who are going to tell them, you know, that's great that that's what you believe, but I believe this different thing as well. And just for kids to be equipped to have these conversations, to know in advance, to be prepared. So they're not blindsided. I know that I don't know the statistics off the top of my head, but I know there are very scary statistics out there of the number of teenagers who leave home and go to college or wherever they go out in the real world and they're just dropping from Christianity like flies because they're not prepared to have these conversations or to encounter these objectives that they're going to meet in the real world when they've only been home hearing, well, Jesus loves you and you should do the right thing because your mom says so and that's enough. We have to have these conversations. That's why I love these resources that you have provided for us. Um, what would you say to a mom, though, who maybe didn't grow up in a Christian household? She's trying to raise her kids right, but she doesn't feel confident herself. How can she use your books or what other advice do you have for how she can raise kids in the word and in truth if she doesn't have that background herself? Yeah, well, the first thing I think is to just acknowledge that it's important. I think that we will spend the time and we will make the effort to do the things that we truly believe matter for our kids. So for example, if you just found out that your child had a peanut allergy, you wouldn't just say, well, I don't feel equipped to deal with it. So you would say, this is a life and death kind of matter, right? And I'm going to research, I'm going to put the time in, I'm going to talk to the doctors, I'm going to protect my kid, I'm going to find solutions, right? Like there 
would be no doubt about that. You would see it as a life and death matter. Well, how much more so should we see it as a life and death matter? What our kids believe about Jesus, that there are eternal consequences to this and how we raise them. It is the most important thing we do as Christian parents to raise our kids to know and love Jesus. And ultimately that outcome, that's not up to us. That's between our kids and God, but we're called to make the investment into it. And so I think that it just starts right there of really just soul searching and saying, is that my primary objective as a parent? Because if I believe Christianity is true, then it should be. So that's the first thing. And once you feel like, okay, it is important. I need to do something. You're going to have the motivation to get equipped. And I think at that point, it's a matter of not feeling overwhelmed, not feeling like you have to know every answer to everything that's out there, because that's not the goal. But as you're learning, you can also teach your kids. So if you put one step forward and you listen to a podcast, maybe today, and you learn something, then maybe you bring that up over dinner and you say, Hey, I was th you know, thinking about this today. This is really interesting. I didn't know about this. And so as you're learning, you can also talk with your kids. And then as you get a little bit more confident, maybe there's a way that you can structure time into your day and it doesn't have to be every day. Anytime you commit to doing something every day of your life, like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I will fail at that 100% of the time. It is hard to say we're going to do something every single day. So maybe you start by having, you know, conversations night once a week and you just say, hey, on Sunday nights, we're going to spend half an hour and we're just going to talk about one of these, these kinds of subjects. And of course, the way you approach this will be different with different ages of kids and that kind of thing, but just throwing out some ideas for doing that. But the important thing to understand is not only that it's important, but you can't teach your kids what you don't know. And so the answer to all this is not, well, what kind of book can I give to my kid? There, there are some books out there and there, and there are some great books out there, but that's a one-time kind of thing. You are are the primary spiritual influencer in your child's life. So you need to be the one who's prepared to continually have the conversations on an ongoing basis. So just make the decision. This is important. I've got to take this seriously. Culture is going to press in on my kids. This is going to be a challenge. They do need to be more prepared and there's nothing more important. And now I'm going to take one step forward. And so what is that one step? That could be a lot of different things. If you go onto my website, I have a resources tab there and I have a whole bunch of book recommendations um, that are broken out into reading plans even. So it's like, hey, I'm new to all this, help me. Like what five books should I read over time? And I kind of lay those out as like read, you know, this, 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 and this. Uh, so that could be a good starting point. My first book, Keeping Your Kids on God's Side, I think is a great starting point for just getting a big overview of everything it's a, it's a apologetics 101, I think is really helpful. If your kids are specifically struggling with, well, how do I know God exists? Or I think I'm an atheist or, you know, those kinds of questions, then my book talking with your kids about God is a great one to start with because it tackles those specifically. And then talking to kids about Jesus would be a great book to start with. If your kids are like, but how do I know Christianity is true? Why, why Jesus? What does it mean that he died for me? And like, how would I know if he was raised from the dead? So they all can serve different purposes, but there are lots of jumping off points once you make the decision. Just make the decision first of all that this is important. Well, as we wrap up today, is there anything else that you want to make sure that you have a chance to share with our listeners? Any like big idea that you want to make sure that you get across? Well, I think I touched on uh, that a second ago about, you know, you are not I call it a purchase mentality. You're not purchasing your child's salvation by putting in a certain amount of time and effort. And I think this is where we get disappointed. We get frustrated. We can get angry. If we feel like if we put in X, Y, and Z, then my kids will respond in a certain way. And they're going to have this kind of relationship with the Lord. And then if that doesn't happen, we're like, well, who failed? Maybe they've been feeling like I failed. Maybe we're feeling like God failed. Maybe we're mad at the kid. And that's not what this is about. It's not a purchase mentality. It is an investment mentality. It is, I am called as a Christian parent to do everything I can to pass on my faith and really to help their kids, my, my kids ultimately develop their own faith. And when I treat this as an investment of my time and effort, knowing that they may choose something different and that ultimately that's between them and God, then we can be much more at peace with the process. We can put the time and effort in knowing how important it is, but not be disappointed or feel frustrated or angry at the outcome. I guess we're always disappointed when things don't go how we hope, but we shouldn't have resentment and anger and those kinds of feelings about it because ultimately it is between them and God. Well, thank you, Natasha, so much for coming on the podcast today and for sharing your books and your wisdom with us today.
No, thanks for having me on. It's been great to talk with you. All right, so that just about does it for today's episode. If you would love to hear more on the topic of Christian apologetics, I would highly encourage you to check out Natasha Crane's website, natashacrane.com, or check out any of her books, which you can find on her website or wherever books are sold. And also, if you are interested in helping your kids and yourself read the Bible more, I would also encourage you to check out my new book that is releasing soon. Fall in Love with God's Word, Practical Strategies for Busy Women will help you as a Christian woman and mom to get in God's Word more so that you can equip yourself not only to live your life as a Christian woman, but also to help your children as well. So absolutely look for Natasha's books. Check out my new book, Fall in Love with God's Word. And as always, if you have not subscribed to the Equipping Godly Women podcast yet, what are you waiting for? We come back here regularly with inspiring interviews with Christian authors and speakers that you will not want to miss. So go ahead, subscribe, leave a review if you'd like, and we'll see you back here again real soon. All right, bye.